And I couldn't have done it without you, Jackson. So I really appreciate you and June and Tracy, everybody over there. It was a great support network and group, and it's just invaluable. I think it's a, a big ingredient for me and for anybody else that's going to go and be successful. Welcome back to Hanging Out with Successful Bar Exam Takers. And today we have a very rare situation indeed. We have someone that passed the California Bar Exam in February of 2023. John, welcome and congratulations. It must feel great. Thank you very much, Jackson. Yeah, it's wonderful. I'm so pleased and so happy to be here. Yeah, this has been an interesting journey, and we're going to talk about some of what, what happened, including what I'm going to describe as a come to Jackson call that you and I had at one point in the background. But why don't you start by just explaining to our audience a little bit about your background and how you came to be taking the uh, attorney's exam in California? Yeah, sure, Jackson. I guess the story would have to start way back when I was a kid, like 11, 12 years old. I it was way back when, believe you, believe you me, that I knew that I wanted to be a lawyer because I would watch lawyer shows on TV and uh, I would see the guys standing there in their suits with all the books in the background. And it's and I said, oh, this is the smartest guys in the world. They've read all those books. And uh, plus, they're standing up for people, getting, getting justice when they can. So it was really exciting to me from way back when. I always had in the back of my mind, I wanted to be an attorney. So then fast forward several, several years. In fact, back when I started law school, I was 42. I wrote a blog post, is 42 too old? And it wasn't, but, uh, but I, I came to it late in life because I, as I tell the story and I tell it way too often for my kids, but I wanted to be a lawyer, had it in the back of my mind, but when there was time, there was no money. And when there was money, there was no time. Finally, time and money came together. And I was 42 years old, but funny thing, my wife and I had gone to live in Mexico and we lived in Guadalajara for 14 years. And during that time is when my time and money came together. So I ended up going to law school in Mexico, which is its own ball of stories. But, but yeah, got through law school, graduated. And then as soon as I graduate, I didn't have any definite plans to even come back to the U.S. at any specific time. I could have stayed for a long number of years further. But my youngest son wanted to come back to the Houston area and go to high school. And so we all moved back. And, and I started thinking, how can I take my Mexican license and my Mexican degree and apply it in the U.S.? And I uh, studied the different pathways in California and found a way to that. So that's uh, how I ended up taking a California bar as a foreign attorney. That is pretty weird, isn't it? And, <laughs> but it wasn't, you didn't pass on your first try. No. And so it, it was a real challenge because you're a partner in a firm in Texas, correct? And you were helping your wife and you were studying for the bar. And how'd that go the first couple of times? I had taken the bar in July of last year, 22. And there's always that old saying, you don't know what you don't know, right? And so I went in a little bit, not cocky or arrogant, but I just, I was not really so scared that I was going to fail. In fact, I was pretty confident, felt like I was going to do well. And when I walked out of there, I walked out feeling like I had done well. And when I got the results and it wasn't true, I was just shaking. I was like, what? I couldn't believe it. And so I had to double down and study harder and take it again in February. Yeah. And after that July result, you and I had what I described earlier as a come to Jackson, right? Do you remember that call? I sure do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically, what I remember is you told me, look, if you don't buckle down and do what you got to do, you're going to end up going out there for nothing or or you should just defer. I'm like, no, I don't want to defer. And so you got real serious about this and yep. started to really lean into it. And I think it's important to point out, this is not something that you just backed into and just showed up and said, here I am. You passed the exam. You worked your tail off for a, a considerable period of time, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Once I realized that I had to buckle down and get it done, that's what I did. I, I talked to my wife. She is a lawyer also, and she does immigration work. And so I try and help out over at her firm when I can, you know, to just do the, do the good deed. 
but she'd bring me home you know, st stacks of work and uh, to, after I got off my regular job. And, uh, and then when do you fit studying in? And so what I had to do uh, pursuant to uh, Jackson's uh, CTJ call, we ended up, I talked to my wife and told her, look, I've got two months left. I got to get ready for this exam or else it's going to be another big waste of time and money. And I said, I have to back away, and she was real understanding and uh, stopped bringing me home stack to work until the bar exam was over. And the yeah, this, same thing at work. I, I had to talk to my boss and say, look, i got to have some time. If you want me to go and pass this thing, I'm going to have to take some time. I couldn't take completely off, but but it basically said half, more or less like half time, do, do what you can. Yeah. And for those that don't know, the pass rate for repeat bar takers in California on this exam was 28%. So you are, in fact, a very rare commodity. You raised your score by at least 130 points. We don't know the exact number, but we've got that. How did that make you feel? It was wonderful because I I just had decided early on, people would ask me, what happens if you don't pass this time? And I just want to try next time. In fact, when I got the July results back that very same night when I saw I didn't pass in July, that same night I signed up, logged in and signed up for the next exam. So I knew that there's not any turning back. There's no giving up. Yeah. And that was one of the things that really impressed me about you, John, is that you kept this great attitude and said, I'm just going to do what I've got to do. And so you signed up for coaching with me. Mm -hmm. and we went through essays and performance tests. Can you tell the audience a little bit about what that process was like from your end? Well, I have a terrible confession that I would make to start that story off. But the first time I took the course in preparation for the July exam, as far as writing, I wrote the uh, Janet Jeweler essay and then didn't write any other essays the whole time I was preparing for the July bar. And I thought that I had understood the structure of what FLA was supposed to be. In my mind, it's not that I was trying to change anything or do something different. I thought that what I was doing was the right structure. And one of the things I found out in coaching was, no, you've misunderstood. You just are not doing it quite right. And the other thing that was real helpful, I didn't do coaching the first time around. Jackson always says, do something different. So I decided well, I'm going to yeah, add coaching in. And I did, and it was very well worth it and one of the things that was really helpful jackson actually took a look at the essays that i had gotten back from my california exam and from july and went through it and what was really encouraging to me was he said look the law you just have to do a better job of getting what's in your head down on paper and he says that's going to be your key. If you can do that, then you can do it. And I said, all right, well, I just trust the process. And so we made some adjustments. One of the things Jackson told me in California, they're looking for 12, 1300, 1500 words. Your essays are 800, 900 words. You've got to put, put more meat on the bones. And basically that's what I ended up doing. I just pushed through and with plenty of help and plenty of feedback from Jackson, I cleaned up the mechanics of the writing and we don't know the final score but i got over the top this time which is great and you worked really hard and you did a lot of work one of the tools you used was photo reading and i'd like to talk a little bit about that process because it certainly is an unusual approach for a lot of people and you were skeptical going in a little bit about how this would work can you tell the audience a little bit about photo reading and what it meant in your studies that was one of those things that you just take it on faith because again you don't know what you don't know i had looked at the introductory videos and stuff that you put out and i like the idea of it and i just decided to plunge head first and, and do it i just decided to dive in and uh, god help us it worked man i would be sitting there and uh, and i could just visualize on some of the questions what the answer was it just came to me intuitively and i'm sure that's from the photo reading yeah. And the photo reading, in addition to that, gave you the ability to get through a lot of material very quickly. That is correct, because not only, am, you know, as you said, working my regular job at the firm and then helping my wife out nights and weekends. And geez, it's just 
you've got to find efficiencies, right? In the way that you prepare and photo cuts way down drastically the time that it takes to get through a large amount of, of material. It's very important as a lawyer, you've got to be able to do that. Yeah. You wrote lots of essays and you wrote lots of performance tests, as well as doing all the substantive studying. How many hours a week would you say you were actually studying leading up to the exam? Do you have an idea of that? I'd have to work it out in my mind because what I did is I was trying to do between two to three hours in the morning when I get up and another two to three hours at night before I go to bed. And that was several several weeks, eight or 10 weeks like that. And then, of course, the last two or three weeks were much more intense five hours a day times five days a week, plus a little bit on the weekend. So 30 hours a week, 10 weeks, let's say 300 hours total, something like that. Um, yeah. Plus the push and, at the end. Yeah. And you didn't have much time because the delay in which California releases results. So you had to turn right around, as you said, register immediately, get back in, start working and coaching to get ready for the exam, but it can be done. And I, I want to make that point to people that you're watching this interview and you've just gotten your results out, there is enough time to get ready for the next exam, correct? Oh, there sure is. Yeah, I, I would say so. But I, I would just repeat uh, your sage words and say that uh, if you're going to do it, make that decision and commit and actually do it. Because I don't know about other jurisdictions, but I know I've taken California twice and that test is no joke, man. You got to really jump in there and make it happen if you're going to, if you're going to do it and be successful. Yeah. And I, I really was impressed throughout this process with your resilience, right? You come off of that disappointing result in July. And instead of licking your wounds about it and moping around and saying, I, what am I going to do? And so on. You just said, all right, look, let's just get in, show me what I got to do. And you accepted the coaching, you used the photo reading, you attended group coaching calls too, I think, right? That's exactly right. And when you talk about me uh, following the, the coaching and jumping right in and stuff, I tell clients this from time to time, fairly frequently, look, it does no good for you to seek out my counsel and pay me and then not do what I say. So uh, it's, it's up to you. That's the way Jackson also laid it out to me was you've paid for this course, you're now what are you going to do with it, right? And, uh, and one of the things that I had not done at all, not a single time did I do a, a group coaching the first time I went through the course and, uh, and again, do something different. So I decided well, I'm going I'm to do that. And I, I really enjoyed it quite a bit. I hit it off with Tracy. I really clicked with her way of expressing things and stuff. So so I enjoyed those group coaching calls and they were a, a big element of being ultimately successful. Yeah. Tracy was very excited, by the way, John, to hear about your results. And she was not surprised, but she was very pleased. Tell me what it was like when you got the results, when they came out. Of course, they come out in the evening on the West Coast and everybody's poised and waiting for that moment. But what was it like for you when you got your results? The results were going to come out eight of eight p.m. my time, and so eight o'clock was coming up, and my wife had been out and about doing some things, and she called me and said, "Oh, I'm going to be a little late. She said, are you going to check the results and let me know, or are you going to wait for me?" I said, "I'll just wait for you." I waited around till like nine fifteen our time. She had come dragging in. I said, "Okay, let's go." And leading up to this, I had watched if you. Google bar bar results reaction video, and you'll see lots of people you know that have filmed themselves. I didn't have the guts to do that, but but I certainly it's just like in the videos. I was hand hovering over the mouse to click the link to check the results, and I, I had to take a deep breath and come back to it because I just was really scared and nervous of the you know. I want to see again, did not pass. I want to see that again. But I clicked on it and I saw a pass and I turned over to my wife and she looks, says, you passed, you passed. Yeah. So we hugged and had our, our happy moment. And I swear, I don't know if other people do this, but in the ensuing days, I went back to the website at least twice to just click on the results again and make sure I saw it right the first time. 
Yeah, you did. You passed. That's awesome. What advice would you have for someone that is taking or retaking the California eggs? It occurs to me two things. First of all is perseverance. Don't give up. And secondly, really buckle down and commit. Follow the process. Jackson's been doing this for many years. Trust the expert. Just follow the program and do what you have to do. As far as that perseverance thing, I remember, by the way, I found uh, Celebration Bar Review. I found them through the podcast. So I first heard the podcast and heard a lot of episodes, and that's how I decided I was going to come with CBR. And so in one of the podcast episodes, I remember Jackson interviewed a guy who had taken the California bar something like 20 times. Yeah. And I said, man, if that dude can do that 20 times, then I can keep going. I can do it. I can do it. So that was really a mindset kind of thing. Yeah, I think that's terrific. And we didn't have to get to 20 with you. <laughs> Two was the magic number. I really was impressed, though, with the way that you took the coaching, you absorbed what we were talking about, you got serious, you did what you had to do. I remember when I had said, you got to cut back at work and you got to stop doing work for your wife and you just got to really lean into it. And you did all that. And I thought that, that was really impressive. And it made very clear that you would, you were serious about the process and serious about passing the exam. I think today it takes that kind of level of commitment, don't you, to be able to be successful on this test? Yeah. Having gone through it twice and in no way would I say that my preparation for for the July bar, I just blew it off or anything. I didn't, but I didn't do it with the intensity I did for February. And so that's, that's, that's the, if you trust the system and, and keep pushing forward, then you'll certainly, you'll certainly make it. Well, that's terrific. And we really appreciate you sharing your story, John, and, and being with us today. Being a member of the Calabar, you're going to feel pretty special, isn't it? Particularly with these kinds of pass rates. Yeah, yeah, it is. Because but foreign attorneys, what would they pass? It's something like 17%. And it's not to pat myself on the back, but it's, it is an accomplishment. It's something that I think me and everybody else that has gone through trials and errors and trying to get through, I think it's a very happy day. And you should take time and celebrate that because it's an accomplishment. You celebrate. I like that word. So there you go. Hey, listen, thank you again for sharing your story. Thank you for being here. Congratulations to you and to your wife. And it's a group effort, isn't it? Yes, yes, sir. It sure is. And I couldn't have done it without you, Jackson. So I really appreciate you and June and Tracy, everybody over there. It was a great support network and group. And it's just invaluable. I think it's the big ingredient for me and for anybody else that's going to go and be successful. Thank you. And I think that's probably a good place for us to stop. I appreciate it so much. I hope that you and the audience found this interview inspiring and encouraging. You can pass the California bar, no matter what you heard from other people, it can be done. And if you do what John did, which was to lean into this and really work the program and really get into it, you can do it in a short period of time. Congratulations, and uh, thanks to all of you for watching. Thank you, John, for being with us, and we wish you the very best as you pursue membership in the Cal Bar. Yes, sir. Thanks very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks. All right.